Alrighty. I think we are live. I'm a minute early. So maybe I'll just wait a little. Or no, it's gonna be nine. Um, okay, so thank you guys for uh, joining me for this presentation, whether you're watching live right now or um, whether you're watching it later. I'm going to be talking about Pepper's Pyramid and more generally Pepper's, um, the optical illusion called Pepper's Ghost. So what exactly is Pepper's Ghost? Um, Pepper's Ghost is a special effects technique used for creating transparent ghostly images. And it was first um, created by this guy named Henry Dirks in 1860. Um, and the idea, or it was first implemented into theaters. Uh, so where actors having ghosts um, on stage, they, it's just an illusion to make it seem more realistic. So at the time he called it a Dirksinian phantasmagoria. And the idea is, I'll move to the whiteboard now. Uh, the idea is that you have a actor on stage, right here, um, here's a stage, and the audience is over here, and you have this huge piece of glass that the audience is able to look through to see the actors, and, um, oops, can you see that? Cool. And below here you have the, we'll say, a guy dressed up as a ghost, I'll just draw him like that, um, and then there's somebody here who who's shining light onto him. That way, his image is able to be um, projected up into this piece of glass and then reflected so that it appears as if he's right here on stage with the, with the actor. Um, so this was um, Henry Dirks's idea uh, for Pepper's Ghost, but it wasn't that common because it would, cr it would uh, make all the theaters have to have this bottom floor where they can have the ghost standing. Um, and a lot of the theaters didn't have that yet. So um, John H. Pepper created an easy, or an easier way to implement this idea. And then it started getting popular and thus um, got the name Pepper's Ghost. And um, I know that a past Facebook Live talked a little bit about total internal reflection and such, but I also just want to touch on it a little bit to um, <laughs> be able to explain this phenomenon. So we know that when light um, is in different materials, it's gonna um, act differently. So if we have one material here and then another material, we'll treat light as like a ray of light. Sorry, you can't see that. I'll scoot this way. Um, and we'll just draw, I'll just draw it as lines here. When you have light coming in at this, with respect to this normal, at some incident angle that I'll just call I, theta I. Um, once it leaves this material and is going into the next one, it's gonna be acting um, differently. So in this case, we'll say that it's gonna be bending at um, a different angle. So that's just when um, it's transmitted through and bending in the other material. And then we have a case where light is coming and then it's hitting at something called the critical angle where it just stays within the same material that it was in at this 90 degrees. So we'll call this the critical angle. And then um, after that, at angles greater than this critical angle, like this, um, you have what's called total internal reflection, which is where the incident um, light Beam, light ray is being completely reflected back into the material that it was in. So um, that's a little bit about the optics behind this. So in this case, what's happening is the ghost is coming in at that critical angle and being reflected off of this piece of glass onto the stage so that to the audience, it appears as if the ghost is on stage with them. Another way to kind of think of this is um, say, from like the audience's perspective, we have the stage right here, and then the ghost right there, um, and then the audience right here. So with your piece of glass, what the audience has seen is the stage. They're watching the play going on. So they're able to see straight through that glass. And then 
the ghost who's standing side stage or somewhere else, um, his image is being reflected off that glass and also visible to the audience. So that's kind of what's happening with um, Pepper's ghost. And now that we know that, um, can you guys think of any other ways that it's implemented besides in theaters by chance? If not, I have an example. Um, I'll open the chat as well. Uh, one example is on the ride Haunted Mansion in Disneyland, if you've ever been there. There's this part where um, you're going through a ballroom and you see these dancing ghosts in the bottom floor. Well, sorry to ruin the magic, but it's actually a perfect example of Pepper's Ghost. Um, so what's happening is you're moving by in your doom buggy and Below you are the animatronic figures dancing and the light is shown onto them and then there's a piece of glass that they're at the correct angle and they're being, their image is being reflected through so that when you're looking at the ballroom, you just see these um, ghostly figures. And I kind of have an image here to show if you can see. Um, that's what the ghosts look like and that's what's going on. I'm not sure if that's mirrored, so sorry about that. But um. Another example is used in teleprompters. So like newscasters, when they're talking about the weather or anything, you're wondering how they're staring straight into the camera, remembering their whole script um, and how, they're, how, they, how that's possible. But what's, what's a good, let me show this slide. Another example of this is where, so you have your newscaster standing right here and Below the camera right here is a monitor screen that's illuminated and it has their script written down on it so that it's projected up into right here, which is a piece of glass. So once it's projected up, it's reflected out into the eyes of the newscaster. So when he's looking straight into the camera, he's reading his script. But when the camera is looking straight out at him, it just sees the newscaster. Another example of this is used when giving speeches. So you have, I don't know if you could see that. You have your speaker standing at the podium and then these two pieces of glass that are pretty transparent. You can see the curtains behind them. And then what looks like just floor decoration to make it look pretty, um, actually hidden behind them are these monitor screens, again with his script or his or her script written down. And it's being projected up into that piece of glass so that from the perspective of the speaker, they can read their um, script. So that um, leads to the ideas behind Pepper's Pyramid, where again, you have your illuminated object on the bottom here, and then you can create those pieces of glass um, into, a, you could tape them so that they form this pyramid looking um, thing at 45 degrees with respect to that illuminated object. So when that image is shown up and reflected from to the observer, it looks like that image is in the center of the pyramid and but what you're actually seeing is a virtual image um, so we have i have an example of that um, right here in the lab so i'll show you um, if i could flip my screen right here we have those pieces this in this case it's plexiglass um, and we just taped it together here and this is a tv monitor screen so I'm gonna be putting up, um, I'm gonna scoot this way. I'm gonna connect my laptop to this video of some jellyfish that you could just look up on YouTube and turn this on. Let's see. Okay, that's turning on. So the reason that there's four images of the jellyfish is because we have four faces to this pyramid. So if we just had, it would work with just one, but you'd be having to look from um, just one side of the glass. So we'll full screen this and then I'll grab the lights really quick. It helps if it's dark. So on the screen, you have those four jellyfish, but once you move to that 45 degree angle, it appears as if there's a jellyfish in the center of the pyramid, <laughs> which is pretty cool. If I put my hand right here, 
to try and grab it, there's, there's nothing there because again, it's a virtual image. So you could imagine this idea implemented into theaters must have been really cool because you can actually, you know, pretend to stab the ghost or do something because they're not actually there. <laughs> so. I'll just pan around here. Yeah, so that's awesome. And I see someone commented about hologram videos. Yeah, so there there is a difference. Um, this isn't a hologram because holograms um, work with the interference of light beams um, and that creates an image that can be seen at any angle. And in this case, you can't see it at any angle. See, as you go above, you can't see the jellyfish in the center. It has to be at that critical, I mean, at that 45 degree angle, and then you can see. And there's other videos. I'll show a, um, let's do this unicorn one. <laughs> and then I'll full screen it. So again, we have just four unicorns spinning around. And right here, we see them in the center. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. And this can um, also be done. I'm going to get the lights again. This can also be done um, at home. We have some things in the optics building where there's these miniature versions of Pepper's Pyramid where you can cut these out and tape them together um, to create this version, but much smaller. And then um, you can just use your phone, you can place your phone under it and put that on top and be able to see the same effect. So yeah, so that is Pepper's Pyramid. If you guys have any questions, um, feel free to ask. And yeah, so that was all that I had for today. So thank you guys for joining, um, hope you enjoyed and have a great rest of your day. <laughs> Thanks, bye-bye.